Hello, we are live. Today is June 2nd, 2017, and we are doing now a one hour free class for <coughs> channeling meditation, oh, channeling psychic work and telepathy with Jim and Tucker. And welcome, Alex, Douglas, and James, and another James. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 To find us, go to humancolony.org, hucola.org, either way. And there you will see a link for the for that free class. <clears throat> we are doing it through Hangouts, so it's broadcasted live. We have one viewer. Hello, one viewer. <laughs> okay. So, um, basically, for the beginners, the key question is to realize what is the best entrance for you how do you everyone wants to channel everyone wants to be starting like bashar and jim and others so what is best entrance for you what is the easiest what is the predefined easy entrance for you into channeling work and how do you see yourself in the future what do you really want to do i guess everyone wants to speak to Takur, Grindel. Yes, I'm Did sure. What what he's talking about is your best um, way to get in. Is do you do you have a, a certain area in your brain that's open to this? Do you have a certain chakra area that seems to be open for channeling? Do you have perhaps maybe the throat or the heart or whatever chakra open the third eye? There are many people and many different ways that channeling can be done. And that is the thing about channeling. It's unique to each individual. I believe that even though uh, a lot of channelers use very similar kinds of channeling methods, the way the information gets through may be a little different. There are areas in the brain that do open up for channeling and are used for uh, information transfer and things of that nature. There are also some people that have implants put in so that they can be channeled by aliens easier because they do use technology for channeling. So I asked them to put in uh, something extra for me so I get more clarity, and they did so. At least Gurk Fichtner did. So, and it seems to work a lot better. But still, there was an open channel there to begin with, but I wanted to be as clear as possible. So uh, that is why I asked for that little addition. Now, there are some people that will channel more naturally than others. And the reason for that is because you have a greater deal of a greater, uh, or a higher sense of psychic ability and you have been able to use it throughout your life and it has been a part of your life all along those of you that are considered intuitive do you know what I mean by intuitive you you get information about pe people when you're just near them or if you just touch them there are some people that are psychic like that that they have information as soon as they get around somebody there the information is already starting to come in now others have it through telepathy which is more of an emotional kind of a state you feel how they're feeling you know how they're doing today you can see that even though they're smiling they're not real happy and then there's those that are uh that actually can uh, go in and feel the same feelings that these uh, people are feeling and bring it into themselves to help them uh, to cure themselves or rid themselves of some of these negative feelings. That's empathic. So those are some things that most humans are, uh, that are available to humans already that are not completely like reading minds or things like that, but they are psychic beginnings. And it is very helpful to have a psychic beginning of intuitive 
telepathy or um, in, or uh, what, what was the uh, the other one I said? The three of those things. They are oh, or empathic. It is nice to have those beginnings because they are the beginning <coughs> of deeper psychic psychic work. Uh, does that is there any questions about that? Because I'm sure some of you already have intuitive, empathic, or telepathic abilities. And those are the beginning of psychic work. Now, there's deeper psychic work, such as being able to read thoughts. And I would consider channeling it a deeper psychic work because you do use the psychic for that. And it bring and it and they do use your vocabulary. They use your emotions, and but they bring in their own thought process. And your mind is uh, deciphering the thought process and putting it into the message that they want to uh, everyone to hear in the perfect way that they're speaking it. So that is another deeper. Uh, psychic ability and I believe everybody has that ability as well I believe everybody can channel I believe there's different degrees of it just like there's different degrees of healing now healing is another part of uh, that can be attached to the psychic abilities I believe that everybody has the ability to heal as well and you have different degrees of healing abilities and uh, some people are very, very strong healers, and some people are, uh, they heal, but their, their abilities are not quite as strong. Now, uh, but with practice, you can get better, no, no matter what you are doing with the healing modalities or the psychic modalities, uh, you can get better with practice. Max, do you have anything to add to that? Hello. Yeah, I guess, I guess um, the first entrance, it, there is an echo, what should I do? Uh, Jim, can you make it a little quieter? Yeah, hold on. Is it mine? Yeah, you just, it's too loud in your room, so can How's you? How's that? Look? One, two, three, it's perfect. Okay, so I guess the first entrance, I just forged the first, uh, the, 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 the pendulum. Hey, Christine, thank you for coming. So. Many people start with pendulums. Somehow I find it difficult for me to work with pendulum, but but basically what happens with a pendulum exactly. is, is that uh, there is a tiny movement of your hand, tiny movement of your muscle, which you cannot notice, but it makes your pendulum spin one way or another. And uh, I know as, a, as an engineer, there is, uh, there is a movement from the hand to the pendulum, but it is unnoticeable normally. So you trust your, uh, you trust your subconscious, unconscious, the spirit to enter through your subconscious and control your hand without you, you mentally controlling it. So you split your physical mind from your subconscious mind and allow the subconscious to to spin the pendulum so you speak to your subconscious mind and the pendulum can tell you basically yes would be like clockwise no would be counterclockwise unsure would be like just standing still and some people have a different different types of uh designation sometimes they want like that would be no or yes and uh, spinning would be yes or no so uh Classical, I think, is clockwise is yes, and counterclockwise is no. But, but, and, uh, and some people just use back and forth. If it goes back and forth, this uh, east and west, it's yes. Oh. And if it goes north and south, it's no. Right. They can do it that way too, instead of having it spin. Uh huh. So you practice it, and then. Um, uh, it is important for any channel in any psychic work that the questions you ask are not simply yes, no. They are meaningful. The, the spirit helps you when you have a reason to be helped, when you are clear, 
motivated and the participation of the spirit is justified so if there is an important question you always have important questions like alive and death life and death love suffering pain health so these are important questions so make sure to ask the spirit important questions which really matter for you and then with these questions calibrate use it every day and then you get you get kind of it becomes for many it becomes uh, a very powerful tool like people use pendulum also for healing when they uh, map chakras on a person and map different uh, health issues on the person I know Brian Daly our favorite uh, healer in Rochester he is very good with with crystals and pendulums I um, somehow for me it didn't work too well because I'm too technical too technical I start analyzing is it my head spinning it or what is happening right so I, I ended up with Reiki kind of psychic work I learned it from my Reiki teacher Barbara so I ask a question and I wait for, wait for Reiki energy to tell me the answer so I open it like that or typically like that like that and uh, ask a question and that the, pre, the pre advantage of that method is the Reiki energy can give you more than just yes no uncertain it can give you also a number and sometimes even a bigger solution so it's it's pretty easy to get a number just you ask and you get a number right you get just there are multiple choice you get a specific number and um, I wasn't sure it was really working until recently I had uh, my friend do some psychic work with me and she was asking specific questions like uh, how many split personalities you got and usually you get one or two and there was a clear number three right so I told her yeah I feel three okay and when, what are their names I told her the names and then she asked me to represent to speak for each of the personalities it was on record and it was just uh, really convincing these personalities were really different they really had each own character each own agenda and they were all three were in conflict which was like amazing and when you realize you have yourself split into conflicting personalities you understand why you're so weak so undetermined so unmotivated and so on so just understanding what you are how you are built uh, Temple, I will mute you and you can, uh, if, if you want, you can uh, turn off your camera too. Nice to have you. Yes. Um, so, so working with Reiki energy is great just for psychic work. And absolutely it helps for, um, for learning the channeling. It is a great entrance because healing is much more justified than channeling. Channeling is something which is from the spirit perspective it is uh, more like a proof uh, cheating on the rules of the game so you sort of when you speak to God you might become convinced much easier and the main test here is to choose the spirit without the evidence right so for healing you get much more permission from the spirit world it's a miracle which is permitted okay hey Wendy I will mute you for now welcome um, so for the spirit it is permitted uh, to do the healing to alleviate the pain uh, especially when that is that is not justified it is not a punishment it's not a lesson it is just unfortunate misfunction of the matrix and they just heal the problems of the matrix that's what spirits do so there is very easy to get the permission from to for the spirit to do the healing like reiki healing for many people so that's the easy entrance to work with the spirit and once you plug are uh, plugged in into the energy healing work then uh next step to channeling is much easier because you're already tied to the spirit you're open to the spirit there is a lot of first hand evidence that it is working like you invite the spirit and you feel it in your hands in your heart when you do the work when somebody else works on you you feel your consciousness shifts so you feel a lot of different first-hand evidence 
uh, proofs. Well, uh, yes. I, I will say that I was uh, doing Reiki when I first started channeling. And the, the evidence that Reiki or a healing modality brings not only spirituality, but a lot of energy into the being and into the psychic being as well is obvious because your uh, belief system is bringing in uh, spirit energies and bringing in the energies of the universe and Mother Earth and working on you as well because you're getting a healing as long as well as you are healing others. So there is a lot of energy moving through you. And, and because of that energy and because of the way that it is being used, I think it does ha have a tendency to open up your uh, psychic abilities more. <coughs> and in my case, it was the channeling ability that was, they wanted me to channel for Max. So that was the area that they helped me to work with. Because I had been, how long had we been working together just with me reikiing you before I started channeling? Uh, just a just couple of sessions before that. Yes, but I had been with Reiki for a while. Yeah, yeah. But with you, it was a couple of sessions before I started channeling because they, they saw the energies flowing when I was actually actually working on Max and they wanted to talk to Max because he was a scientist and they had information or they thought they had some information for him. I don't know exactly what they said to you that first time, but uh, I know it was scientific in some way. So they are the ones that uh, brought it into being. They helped me to bring it through because Max wanted to hear it and they wanted to talk to Max. And he had told me already before then that he had that there were aliens around him, and that um, that I was starting to sense them. I or I had mentioned that I sensed something, and he was saying to me that he believed I was sensing the alien presence around him because the alien presence around him was told that it was there how for quite a while. Yeah, I. I was awakened uh, in 2000, in 1999, I was awakened to the idea of uh, energy healing. I was interested, but I had like real experience of energy healing, somebody healing me, and I was became studying that. It was my passion since then. So 10 years later in 2009, I was awakened to the idea of the aliens, and uh, I made presentations on that topic, I made YouTube videos, and uh, I wrote a book and the book was about the habilitation program and sympathetic to grace. And when I entered through gym in 2013, four years later, uh, they introduced themselves as, as a tall gray. So that was a nice, um, and he, the, the, he said they followed me since about 2002, more or less. <clears throat> so th that is um, the take home message is that it's a path to walk and uh, healing is a great entrance for that and um, for somebody to start channeling there would be very nice to have an interest on the other side so channeling just channeling and emptiness is more difficult than having uh for the, for the spirit or for the aliens an excuse they need the reason why they need to speak so they had clear reason to speak to me because i wrote a book about them so if there is a reason, if there is a question on the other side, if they have a friend or an audience or group of interested people, it's much easier for the information to come through. That's why we do in our sessions, and Bashar does in their sessions, they do questions answers because when there is interest, there is clear work on uplifting people, clarifying them, educating them, uh, bringing up their belief systems, then there is much easier to penetrate the veil and get the permission for that. Yes. Um, with me, I guess I must have uh, believed and given permission before I even realized it because they were working through me and I didn't even understand what channeling was.
But since they wanted to speak to Max so badly and they said they had good things to say to him, I, my subconscious agreed that it would it would give him the information. So that's how it actually started. Um, it was very unusual the first couple times, but I got used to it quickly. But um, the thing is, it is part of your belief system too. At first, I was a little shocked, but I believed that it was good and that it was uh, aliens, and that's why I let it go. Otherwise, I could have stopped it. Now, Jim was I, more into uh, spirits than aliens before that, right? Yeah. I was. Mm -hmm. But you're, you kept saying to me, it's all right, it's good, it's all right, it's good. They're saying good stuff. And that kept me going. Because at first I was going to shut down, but you go, no, no, they're good. They're good. They're fine. Don't, they're telling me stuff. So I stayed open. But now I don't need that, of course. But at the very beginning, it was helpful that you did say that because otherwise I would have shut down. But um, because I wasn't sure what was going on. But you were saying that was all right. So that was good. I did have something there that was telling me that to all right let this happen so that was good another interest for uh, for that is a c5 work uh c5 is when you meditate in the open inviting aliens to show up and for many people it is um ufology um and they first started studying aliens as a phenomenon more like observational phenomenon and then they realize that it was, uh, there is a possibility with the for the speaking to them and some people come from paranormal research field although it's i think it's a rare because i guess in paranormal research people are have darker darker interests they kind of are more on the darker side and for them is um, harder to, to get to the lighter side of channeling but i guess it's up to your spiritual growth it's really important that when you do your psychic work and when you channel your clear clean positive really forgiven really loving not angry if that always helps because uh, if you if, if you if you are in the pain and anger and you channel you attract um, more like negative entities and um, we had an example of that depressed people under influence of uh under influence were attracting more negative more like reptilian type negative reptilian draconian and uh, other dark types yes. and uh, that was unhealthy in many ways so so it's nice to to do channeling and remain healthy and have your life continue in a positive in a positive direction um one more thing i wanted to say so bashar is an example of trans channeling jim is doing trans channeling but Jim is also doing lots of psychic work in between. So he doesn't have to go into trance to speak to the spirits. He would pray and get the answer without, without actually leaving his body and without having the spirit of the alien to possess his body, right? You can do psychic work. So psychic work, um, Diet, we had the Diet uh, doing psychic work on, um, on our channel. And um, I think it's much easier entrance for psychic work. You don't have to really let leave the body and let somebody else to enter your body you just uh, sense what's out there sometimes it's not even worse it's more like questions and answers you ask yes no or a little more complex questions and you feel the answer and gradually you get it get it right it's not direct speech but more like a conversation with uh the intuitive understanding of the questions well, I want to say this too. When, when I truly feel that there's psychic um, messaging going on, it's really not me. It's people and spirits and others working through me because um, it just comes through. Like when they're, we're on a webinar or something and they start telling you about yourself or telling people about what they're doing and and know a lot about the situations that are happening and I don't know any of that of course and as in my my mind as I'm 
a channeling. I don't know any of that information, but it's just coming out because it's they are doing the reading. They are part of that uh, attaching to my psychic energy so that they can do this. But it does not feel like I'm doing it. It doesn't feel like uh, I'm a part of that in the sense that I'm not doing the uh, uh, doing the psychic part of the work. They are attaching to my psyche, but they are the ones doing the psychic work as well. But my psychic energy has to be open and given over to them for them to be able to do that. And that's not hard to do because I know that they will use it properly. Now, see, you have to have a lot of trust to be a, a, a good channeler, really. You have to trust the people that are coming through. You have to trust that your information is going to come out pure. Of course, beforehand, you do a lot of prayer and meditation and, and praying that it will all come through and, do the, and the right things will come through and everything will be pure and integral and of the spirit and informational. I do that. I pray all day long about that because that is so, so important to me that the information comes out true and integral and in a way that people can understand it. But the other thing is I have to trust that the information that they want to give and the, inf the psychic uh, abilities that they have are going to be used for a positive reason and that so that I can just let go and let that happen for people out there and for the people that I'm talking to because I want to be able to help other people that are here in, in, the, in the room or here doing a session. And so I have to let go and trust. And you have to let go and trust and believe that the messages are going to get there in the, the right way. And that the other thing about that is not to interfere with it. But a lot of people, and I know it's true, they will analyze the information as it's coming through because they don't really trust it as much as they should. Or they, not, not even if they don't trust it, but they want to know the information before it comes out. They want to make sure that what they're saying is the right thing. I used to do that myself. And uh, Max used to say, uh, that was 80% uh, aliens and 20% Jim. And he would be right because I would be analyzing the information as it was coming out and not letting it come out as, as purely and as, uh, as, uh, crisply or something as they wanted it to come out and so it would be true that i was putting myself into it a little bit these days less and less and less and less uh, there are some times that i actually do get z um, zero time in there for, for myself and that is usually the better of the the webinars or the sessions the more better information comes out in a better way, in the way that they know will reach the person that you are speaking to. So tr you have to really trust yourself to let go and let these entities take over. But I'll tell you what, you're not going to do that at first because you're going to want to get to know them, you're going to want to get to trust them, and then you're going to let go. But try to let go as soon as possible because any interference that you have with the message that might be things that you believe are good information from you, you can ask Max. You can always tell who is talking. You can tell if it's an alien talking. You can tell if it's me talking. You can tell if it's Ganesh talking. It's it's obvious at times now some people might not be able to tell but if you knew me as well as max does he knows exactly when i'm coming through and when the real entity is coming through and so lately i have come to a point where i have been very trusting there are several entities that i trust completely 
Takur, Lakesh, Yogananda. I tr trust them with all the information that they come out with because I know them and they've been with me many times. Even Grindel, I trust him completely, even though he uh, can be um, inappropriate. He has a reason for that. And he let me know that there is reasons for being inappropriate in some groups. And so I just let him do what he needs to do. And um, But remember, when you are a channeler, the information is the most important thing. It is not the most important thing that people know who you are, that people are saying, oh, what a wonderful channeler he is or she is. But the information is tops. You have to understand that the information is what you're there for. It's not because you don't want to be a channeler because it's going to bring you notoriety. That is not the reason to be a channeler. You're not going to be a channeler because it's special and you're going to be better than anybody else. That's not the reason to be a channeler. The reason for channeling is to bring information and help to people and mankind. And there are some people out there that get into channeling for the wrong reasons. So don't be one of those people. I, I don't think that any of you are. But I just had, for some reason... To yeah, let, 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 me copy, uh, let me comment on that. It's uh, yes. Many people come to get uh, sex uh, and uh, power and money and fame. And then uh, when you reach a certain level, you have a choice. To become better, you have to drop all this negativity because you can't really become better spiritual uh, teacher having all this luggage. So you have to release and resolve all of that. Because to be a good channel, you have to be clean transparent clear because the channel has to be clear right it's really Im improper to hide a lot of things you have to like really be fine with releasing all that you are and then you become clear channel so if you have a lot of things hidden you can't really ch channel because you have to take care of not releasing that stuff the, you work through the whole body right there is no place in your body to hide information anymore because you have to be one harmonized, resonating body, and then you go, you're a good channel. Well, and I wanted to say something else as well. Um, yes, that's very true that you, you do let yourself be very true to uh, for who you are and be very natural. And I've had a, a lot of people come to me and say, why haven't you raised your rates? Uh, you're you're a better channeler than so and so or whatever, and I go thank you, but I want people to be able to afford me at at this point because there are a lot of people that need help, uh, and there's a lot of people that say, oh, you you channel too many people. You need to break it down to just one or two persons so that it will they'll come in really clear. Well, that's not the way God made me a channeler, so I have to be the kind of channeler God made me. I can't just lower it down and say, okay, just Lakesh and Takur can come in. I can't do that. But I've had a lot of criticisms about why I do things the way I do and how I do things the way I do and what my kind of, why aren't you out there on your <laughs> own site uh, bringing in a lot more money because Hukalo sort of, there's a lot of different people and it's hard to man. Uh, find you on there sometimes. I go, those people that need to find me will find me. I am not worried about being lost in a group of wonderful channels. That does not bother me. And so these are the kinds of things that will come up against you as a channeler as well. They're going to say, you need to do it this way, you need to do it that way, because when you're someone that channels to a lot of people, they're going to have opinions. And you know what? You're going to have to stand tall and be yourself and do not uh, fall into the peer pressure kind of hole because it is a hole. You have to be yourself. You have to bring in the entities that you know that you should bring in. You have to do things the way that you know that spirit wants you to do them. 
and that's another area where some channelers get away. They they see the money. They see the money start coming, and they're going, I can make a fortune here. And to be honest, if you're a good channeler, you can make a lot of money, and that's true. But are you being true to yourself? Are you being true to your message? Are you being true to all those things that you need to be true to? Now, yes, I support myself with channeling and with Reiki. But you know what? I do not ask God to bring me a fortune. I don't know if that would be helpful for me. <laughs> so God keeps me where he needs me to bring the best messages through to the people. And I know that not all the messages come through uh, resonate. There are reasons for every message to be come through. There are reasons for even the messages that don't resonate with you to come through because there is someone that needs to change a thought process and this might be a bridge to it. And there are some people that are doing things that they know they shouldn't do, and this might point them out in some way that they understand that other people don't. So it is interesting how the messages come through, but I trust them, and I believe that they will bring them through in the, in the best way possible, and I will not change that for anyone. Is there uh, any questions about that? Yeah, how about we bring Takur because we're running out of time. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, I will bring Takur. What, what you said was absolutely great and it was very good. Um, while you bring in Takur, how about I just comment one more thing that as you okay. start, as you start uh, channeling or other psychic work, uh, the darkness comes from inside of you, so you have to deal with it because you clarify yourself, you open the blockages, and old pains, old uh, fears, old uh, conflicts surface. And it is a normal process, and we go through all that process. It's, uh, it's normal. That's all. Greetings. I am Takur. Takur, welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you. It is good to be here. Ah, there are many people here already. What is it that you would like me to speak about? Uh, let me see if maybe there are any special wishes today. Hey, hey, hey people, uh, can you unmute yourself and speak? Questions. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hey. Hello. Is there a message for me at all? This is Alicia. Oh, no, no. It is a class. We are not supposed oh. to give messages. Okay. It is a class Sorry. on telepathy. But I wanted to ask Takur, there was a message from Ish a couple days ago. Do you have any short updates on that? Uh, you mean about your atmosphere and timeline? Timeline, yeah. Things are moving forward in a positive way. Uh, many of you have taken action, and there are some that are fighting against this activity because they want the timeline to fail. But this timeline must succeed for a greater success in the galaxy. There are those that would say, this timeline must fail so that we might get a better one, but there will not be a better one. And this one is, with it, you have to understand with timelines, they are not ruled by other beings, but God rules the timelines. Nobody, no species can rule a timeline as far as grabbing hold of it and taking charge. They can do what they have done. Humans have damaged it, that is true, but they cannot take it over as far as the timeline is concerned. They can take over your planet, but that is not the entire timeline. So be wary. Do help us to bring your planet back into a healthy place. And there are many of you that are doing that, and we appreciate it. But do not believe those that have negative messages about this timeline being uh, ruled by the outside. It's, it's not true. Thank you. Uh, 
so now switch it to the class matter. Karen, do you have a question? Yes. Yeah. Hi, Tucker. It's Karen. Hi. Hello, Karen. Um, Good to see you. Hi. Good to see you too. Um, I do have a question about the timelines because um, I'm shifting all over the place here. Correct. And I th did we did we have another shift yesterday? Because there was many something... shifts, and let me tell you why. Uh, on the twenty mm. fifth, it came to a head. Around the twenty first, yeah, I felt that one. Event, there was a twenty around the twenty first or second. There was an event in Antarctica that uh, caused the timeline to be what they called ionized. It's that's okay. not the correct term, but it's the closest that we can use. And it's it makes a lot of people who are very fourth dimensional shift around a little bit. And you are very sensitive to these time shifts. And on the twenty fifth. It all came to a head, and the total timeline was under this ionized process, or whatever you want to call it. Now, yeah, I had. Since, no, go ahead. Yeah, since then we've been trying to uh, help your planet, but your beings are the ones that have done this damage, so they must undo it. And so many of your scientists have come together to try to help uh, with this problem. There, there are some things that they are doing that are helping. And with the humans that are also helping, it is helping to clear the negativity out of the atmosphere. I had a, um, I had one on Thursday, I had something happen on Sunday, and on yes. Monday, where there were significant shifts. And then I think even yesterday. Yes. There and and just, just as a silly example, but I had received a letter from Toyota to go and test drive a Prius. This is crazy. To test drive a Prius. And even I read the letter to Wendy yesterday, and we were laughing about driving in a Prius. And then when I got to the place today, they said, no, it's not a Prius, it's a Yaris. And I went back in the letter, and it said Yaris. And I promised you yesterday, it said I, I was supposed to ride in a Prius. <laughs> and I'm like... There are some oh things like this happening and will continue <laughs> to happen like this. And they will go back and forth. Uh, you may read it two days from now and it may say Prius again. So um, yeah. okay. the things are bouncing around inside. Let me also explain this. Many of you uh, visit other timelines in your astral also for different reasons, for different positive uh, reinforcements and things of that nature. Well, now you are not going to other timelines, but you are going bouncing back into uh, timelines you were in before in your memories and learning more about those visitations, but it's not new visitations. Right. So, yes, sort of, it's very, it's a bouncy time, yes. Thank you. Is this going to stabilize anytime soon? Well, or? they're working on that. I cannot tell you the answer to that because only the humans know the answer to that completely. Right, okay. <clears throat> okay, well, it's, it's, I mean, I, I hope we're shifting into a more positive well, um, the, the Syrians were allowed to come and help, but they have any of you heard that the Syrians came and collected some of the cabal? Oh, no. No. This is what has happened. They, the Syrians were sent from the galactic uh, law enforcement to collect and question cabal members because they are the ones that caused the accident. Oh, wow. Okay. There's also, I don't know if you know, but there's a 13-year-old physicist that's on YouTube right now, and he actively acknowledges that uh, in CERN, they um, they reduced the weight of one molecule, and he says that shifted our timeline. And he says this is accepted within the scientific community. People know it. It, it, that, it did not uh, shift it enough to make it inadequate. Exactly. But he said it, it he just shifted correct. like one over. Yeah. Yes, he is correct. However, the thing that happened in Antarctica was enough to ionize or put a field around your timeline that is not healthy. 
And it does affect CERN, the hy hydro collider that is under um, Switzerland. That is, has been affected, yes. I, I will say I, all the stuff he was saying was really interesting and I went back and uh, I listened to an old channeling from Theos and Theos basically described it the same way he did. So it was a yes. good confirmation coming from spiritual world and the scientific world. But Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It is confirmation. Okay. Yes, it is not a secret. So I can actually tell you, affirm that that is correct. Okay, thank you. It actually didn't change the timeline as much as the space within the timeline. Does that make sense to you? Mm. Well, can I, I just, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I've had all kinds of weird stuff. Like this yes. is, I, for instance, when I first moved to the Netherlands 17 years ago, I had a friend who had a son that was just born. And I remember him talking to me and he was ex upset because he was breaking up with his wife and he was worried about, you know, having to raise his son and all these things. And wouldn't you know it, about a month ago I talked to him. His son is now 14. And his son was born. <laughs> and I'm just like, How okay. How is that possible? But yes. How is it possible? How yes. is it possible? And there's a lot of things like that. I've, I have had a lot of things. There's a house on my block that the first time I jumped timelines, which is about three years ago, that had completely changed. It went to a different color. It had a different outer thing. Um, there's just a lot of really yes. significant things. And normally when we shift, I feel really nauseated and I wake up and I hear, you've shifted timelines. But now it's happening so much it's, it's, um, it's like, probably you, I'm like, yeah. Not a pro yes, I understand that completely. A lot of mm -hmm. fourth dimensional people are experiencing different kinds of anomalies. That one is different than you may talk to someone else that is moving between the timelines quite frequently. You might talk to someone else that uh, the those Mandela effects are numerous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You might talk to somebody and find that they are just really weak and depressed or they, their energy has been zapped completely out of their body almost because the, this timeline is draining them. So it's, yeah. it depends on how you're connected to the timeline, what it's doing to you. Well, I've, I've just come out of that of a very like tiring time and, and, yes. and having like so I've sort of popped back into my power again. But yes. just and to give you another to... example. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, just to give you another example of something that happened, um, but it's been now a year, is that I was standing in the living room and I was watching some video on, uh, uh, on spirituality or, or something. And I just came in with my dogs. I was standing there. And as I stood there, I felt very nauseated. And, and, and even my dog was like looking up at the ceiling and I felt really, I had to hold on to the chair. I felt so dizzy. And I, uh, <laughs> I said, oh, okay. I, and I heard you've shifted timelines and I said, all right. So I went to my kitchen to get some, I thought I'm going to make myself some tea. So I walked to the dishwasher. I opened the dishwasher. I took out a cup. I filled it with water. I walked to the microwave to put the water in the microwave and when I opened the water the microwave, there was a cup of hot steaming water. <laughs> and yeah. I, I, so I, and I stood there and I looked at it, and I was like, "How is this possible?" And I put my hand in, and I thought, "This is not possible." And I dipped my hands in the water, and it was really, really hot. And, yes. and I just said, "What in the hell?" You know. So I thought, okay, I've shifted timelines. I just, um, and so now when I hear you've shifted timelines, I always look around to see what is different because there's yes. something that's different. It's so and close, are, but not, you know? And there are those uh, beings that would have uh, high fourth dimensional people monitored for the sake of uh, science because they want to see what they go through so you may be mo be being monitored by other species not that they have any equipment on you but they may be nearby yeah. checking you out well that's fine but you know maybe they could make me dinner or something 
<laughs> instead of just giving me I hot water. I doubt they will do that, but I will suggest <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I think is I jumped forward and backward. I think I jumped it. I jumped forward yeah, into, yes. on the timeline. I went. I'm gonna. I went at least a few minutes in the in the future because I know that for the water to be that hot, it would have had to heat at least two minutes in the microwave. And I had okay. just come in from being out with the dogs. There's no way the water was that temperature, and I hadn't put water in there. The the, the right. idea to drink the tea came after I shifted and not before so yeah but I've had stuff like that going on and um, yeah I, I, I it doesn't scare me I just I what I'm hoping is that we're shifting into a, a more positive place and that the the sort of energy that is propelling us forward is moving us into a place where we can get back into balance because we you know kind of at the time of the election it all went all squirrely but uh, exactly. I'd like to get I, I'd like to get back into that Positive well, we will do that as quickly as possible, or your Thank people you. will do that as quickly as possible. I see great promise in restoring the timeline if people continue to do what they are doing. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. I know that there is a question out there somewhere about a timeline, a, a channeling, channeling question. Hello. Okay. Yes. Oh my goodness. Can you hear me next? Yes. Takur, it's Wendy. Hello. Okay. I wanted to find out uh, about the meeting. How yes. did that You're going show on. Up? Yes. Was I present because I don't remember anything? <laughs> uh, that is all right. Most people do not remember, the, and they do exactly what you do ask if they were there. But yes, many of you have shown up. And many uh, people mm -hmm. are speaking, well, are going to speak, I should say. Saturdays when the humans start to speak, and they will speak for a number of hours. Okay. And the main topic um, the, 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 was also this timeline discussed, what's going on here. There are and many, many different topics. The topic that is being discussed right at the moment is disclosure yes yes because um a lot of people are still not believing that that you all are out there and th they have uh a lot of the really the public that i'm mixing with don't really understand the come about so why uh why you all are there more so have a hard time <laughs> believing uh the existence of you all and it's it's not the well, fact that i don't tell them that you all the thing is do but they have that look of awe and if you would tell them this highest point tell them if they were to seek they will find evidences everywhere on online and on different things and then when they find that evidence they will say it's not real because your the powers that be yes, have planted in humans that there is false news everywhere. And this is to their advantage because they want you not to believe in the things that are out there so that they may can maintain control and ha have you frightened to believe anything really except what they say. Understood. And then there's one more last thing. Is there a way how uh, through the mechanics of other beings that you know who are very um, using the use and even the sun can possibly uh, use you are breaking up that will help people not to can anyone understand what she is saying? No, she's breaking up for everyone. You're really breaking up. I could not understand you at all. Are there any other questions? I'm sorry, you did break up quite severely. Yes, I have a question channeling to Kurt. I'm sorry. Ah, there it is. Yes? Um, 
I have a, a question on channeling. Yes. Um, on, on the channeling, um, when I'm trying to go into a meditation, I'm always um, itching and scratching. And yes, they're trying to. They they're trying to divert your attention and distract you in any way possible, so that you cannot get into a, a good state of comfort or relaxation, calmness. So what it is is that before you even try to do this, pray that they will uh, pray to God that He will protect you and surround you, and this itchiness, all these distractions, will not be there. This is a sign to me that you have great potential because they would not be trying to distract you otherwise. There must be some kind of message or someone that's unique to you that wants to come through that they don't want to come through. Okay. okay. Um, is uh, listening to um, Om Chance, um, is that a distraction or would that um, no, help? No, actually that would not be considered a distraction to me. But if it distracts you, then just put on something very soft or cover your ears with something so you cannot be distracted by sounds. It's the itching, and the, like right now, where, can't sit. Where are you still. itching at? Um, it'll be the leg, back of the neck. It'll be here. It'll be the arm. It'll be my back. You know. But you don't Every usually uh, itch any other time. Um, whenever, no. Yes, they, they're distracting you. Okay. Who are they? Whoever is wanting to stop her from channeling. Now, do you know who you are going to be channeling? Well, actually, I'm just trying to, I'm just at the first stage of meditating or um, sitting still for, um... You see if they can distract you and get you to a point where you give up trying to channel, then that will be their biggest success. But do not let this happen. Pray that you are itching, that you will be able to find your space so that you may concentrate and become relaxed and concentrate. Okay. Okay. I will help okay. you one-on-one -on -one if necessary. Oh, okay. My friend is here. Beautiful friend, <laughs> a relative of the Lyran culture. Yes, <laughs> yes, I think he's the one that um, you tried to talk to once, and um, oh yes, he likes the head button. Yes, she likes to. Thank you very much for your help. You're let's welcome. Take, let's take the last question, and then uh, we have to let Jim go. Is there any uh, more questions? Hello, yeah. hello, Tucker. Angela, how are you? Hi, I'm very well, thanks. And you, Tucker? It's good I'm to hear well. you. I have a, a, a different question, yet it's on channeling. I have been teaching channeling. Yeah. And um, I have one particular student that has a chip, a channeling software. Now, I'm not sure, but is there a difference in that, that approach with that channeler? Is there something, is there a different technique that, that they need to go through, or are they, are they normal just like all of us? I did not hear what they had. Oh, sorry. Uh, he's got a chip, a channeling uh, chip in his head. Oh, a chip in his brain. Right, right. This um, is... That is for aliens only. And let me explain why he has a chip. It is uh, because aliens use technology and sometimes they will chip someone so that they can channel through them more easily or open the brain up in that area to their particular brand of uh, translation, if you will. Okay. I uh, see. But no, I'm you can be... train him like everyone else, except that he has an right. advantage with whatever species or whatever group of aliens has done this for him. All right, excellent. Thank you. Would I need that software as well? 
you may ask for it. The different species may uh, say yes or no. If you need it, they may give it to you. If there's someone that really wants to be very clear and um, very, very, very uh, precise, they may chip someone. This individual here oh. asked for a chip and we gave it to him from Gurkfik Nir. And uh, because we wanted our messages to be as clear as possible, and he is fine with all other species as well. They seem to be happy. They can use the chip in some ways also, but not the same way we do. All right. They can well, use it. Um, if I, yeah, if I need to be chipped, I don't mind. It's not something that I have a, a hang be, up over. They will take it into consideration. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all for me. Thanks. Very well. Have a wonderful day. Yes, you too. Thank you. <laughs> I w must go now. From what uh, Max has said, that was the last question. Uh, because Jim needs his time. <laughs> wonderful. Thank I you will have, for a, have a wonderful day, everyone. And no more stay. Thank you. Love you too. Uh, Yes, love you all as very well. Thank you. I lost Jim's image. Anybody can see Jim? Hello? Hello. Jim, I can't. Uh, thank you very much. I keep the recording going. We can uh, stay here for another you. 15 minutes and uh, I can let you go and uh, I will see you soon, right? So yes, sure see you your time. 30 Eastern Daylight Time, 3.30. Yeah. That's for Founders Meeting. Founders okay. Meeting, yes. All right. All right, very good. Have see a later. great day, everyone. All right. I just wanted to comment my experience with uh, Ichin and somebody else also mentioned that when they lay down for um, meditation, they, they drool a lot. So <coughs> I, I, I had both of these experiences and um, Ichin is, yeah, it's a bitch, yeah. So it comes often, but you I deal with it one way or another. First way to deal with it like, touch yourself right because when something is itching it is perception of the brain and it's a spiritual event too but it is a perception of the brain when uh, it focuses all the sensation contrasts them and selects the most uh, strongest one and there is like mathematical filtering algorithm how all the sensations of your body it picks the strongest one and focuses on it so it's self-activated mechanism, and obviously it is not. It's it's for insects mostly or other biting things, but obviously there is nothing there. So you just kind of touch it around, and you give the brain uh, alternative signals, which kind of dis dissolve that focus and contrasting mechanism. So that's how it works. But basically, the take-home message: you just touch yourself, scratch yourself, and uh, and continue meditating. So it doesn't happen forever. It, ha it can take, you know, five minutes, seven minutes, but usually in 10 minutes, you stop itching. It just, the brain stops that overactivity of sensing. Um, <clears throat> another way, you don't have to touch, you kind of, in your mind, project that you are, you are like, you're one of your hands, imaginary hand, uh, theory can goes and, and itches, but while you're, you're not moving. Uh, I would say 50% of the time it helps. Other other point is, if it issues in one place, you focus on another place, like your attention goes in certainly in another place, and uh, and it helps by itself. By You've frozen. Does this mean that um, this is ended?